So his name was Pa Elton, and he was a father of the Pentecostal movement in Nigeria. So I take his prophecies very seriously because towards the end of his life in the 1980s, he began to warn the church in Nigeria and the nation about great corruption that was coming. And he said, apostasy in the church. So during the last few years of his life, because he died in 1987, he gave some very powerful words. What was he saying? He was saying that coming in from America was a wave of apostasy that would influence the Nigerian church. His most powerful prophecy was this. He said, around the world, Nigeria will become known for corruption. Not just in Africa, but right around the world, he said, Nigeria will become known for this. Sadly, this prophecy has come true. You know, I live on exactly the other side of the world. And even in my country, if I say, oh, I'm going to Nigeria... They say to me, ah, that is a very, very corrupt country, Andrew. Watch out that uh, your money does not get stolen in Nigeria. Nigeria is one of the top 20 most corrupt countries in the world. Now, this is a remarkable thing because Nigeria is also one of the most religious countries in the world. But even in southern Nigeria, where it is supposed to be a very, very Christian place, Christianity has failed to drive out the corruption. In fact, it's probably as bad now as it's ever been. In most places on earth that have this number of Christians, the corruption would have been driven out by now. Because in most places that become as highly Christian as this, the very preaching of the gospel drives the corruption out. So you would have to say there's something wrong with the Christianity that is being preached here that it does not destroy corruption. This is exactly what Pa Elton warned about. Exactly. So Pa Elton arrived in Nigeria way back in 1937, and he was here until 1987 when he died.
What did he begin to warn the church about in the 1980s? It says, he warned the church about the taking of titles. The building of empires. The apostasy that was coming in with American emphasis on money. He said the apostasy that is coming will seek to commercialize the gospel. And he warned the Nigerian church. He warned the Nigerian church specifically against the doctrines that were coming in from America. You know, in the 1970s, the Americans invented a new doctrine. A totally, totally unbiblical doctrine. Because a lot of their preachers wanted to get rich and they wanted to enjoy their wealth. It was called the prosperity gospel. And the saddest day in the world, in my opinion, one of the saddest days in the world, is when the Americans introduced that prosperity gospel into Africa and Nigeria. Why? Because it has totally corrupted the church in this nation. Because, as the Bible clearly says, the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. And Jesus clearly said you cannot serve God and mammon. And yet we have preachers around the world, especially on television, preaching that God wants us rich, and especially the preachers. Flying around the world in jet planes, corrupting the church. Speaking words that are the exact opposite of everything Jesus said. And this corruption is so ingrained in Nigerian Christianity that the church can no longer clean out the society because the church itself is so corrupt. What did Jesus say about riches? Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on this earth. How hardly shall a rich man enter the kingdom of God? It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. Luke chapter 6. Woe to you that are rich. For you have already received your reward. James chapter 5. Go to now you rich men, weep and howl for the miseries that will come upon you.
I believe God is judging the nation of America. Because of the pollution they have spread in the earth. And that pollution is in danger of ruining the witness of the church in this land. But Pa Elton also said something amazing would happen. He said the apostasy will come, the corruption will be legendary around the world in this land. But he said, a day will come after that when there will be a great revival of righteousness in the nation of Nigeria. A revival of righteousness so powerful that around the world people would come to Nigerians. And they would take hold of Nigerians and say, we hear that righteousness has come to your nation. Take us and show us this righteousness. Amen. What a powerful word. Amen. That the corruption would be so great, but that the day would come when the corruption would be driven out by the word of the Lord. Do you know, I've studied revivals for many years. I write books about revival history and the history of reformations in the church. And I want to tell you, there is no such thing as a revival of repentance that does not have John the Baptist preachers. This corruption will not be defeated unless those preachers are found. There will be no revival of righteousness until the John the Baptist arise. I want us to think about that word corruption for a minute. You see, we talk about politicians and we talk about a very bad problem in Nigeria with the corrupt politics. I want to tell you that corruption in the church is much worse than corruption in politics. Because we are responsible for speaking to the nation and speaking to the politicians. And if the corruption is so bad in the church, we simply cannot speak to them because the pollution is actually within us. Every politician in this country knows what's going on with the church and money. They see people getting on television from this country and begging the poor for another offering. Screwing the poor people for every little cent they can get. Everybody out there that doesn't come to church, many of them don't come to church because they know they're going to get screwed for money. (laughs) 
Why? Because the preachers believe God wants them rich, and so they set about doing that. And because the church is corrupted by the love of money, and the serving of mammon, the church cannot preach to the politicians and say, repent. Because it would be total hypocrisy. An unclean church cannot cleanse an unclean nation. Cleanse your garments, says Jesus. Wash your hands of this. He says to the church, repent. And when you are clean, you can speak to the nation and see the corruption destroyed.